Hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Rockesey from the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the association between pancreatic cyst fluid KRAS mutations uh, and long-term outcomes of patients with pancreatic cysts. As most are aware, pancreatic cysts are becoming increasingly detected, uh, and a subset of these cysts include mucinous cysts, uh, which have malignant potential. Uh, we often use EUS with FNA to evaluate these cysts. However, the impact of this information in regards to the long-term outcome of the patient remains incompletely understood. Uh, therefore, it was the aim of this study to identify any clinical and cyst-related characteristics at the time of index EUS, which are associated with the long-term outcome of the patient. Uh, the study design was a retrospective analysis of previously prospectively enrolled patients who were referred for evaluation of a pancreatic cyst. All patients underwent an EUS with an FNA between 2004 and 2007 and had at least two years of follow-up uh, or had prior or had undergone uh, pancreatic surgery or died of uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, the information we collected uh, included demographics, clinical presentation, uh, EUS findings with cis fluid analysis, uh, which included cytology, CEA, as well as a full uh, molecular analysis. Uh, we also collected follow-up data up until October of 2010. Uh, this follow-up data consisted of surgical history and pathology, uh, if applicable, uh, death and cause of death, again, if applicable, and any repeat imaging studies. Uh, for the purposes of analysis, what we did is, uh, based on the pathology and patient outcomes, uh, we classified cysts as having a non-benign or a benign course. Uh, we defined a non-benign course as that with mucinous pathology uh, on resection uh, or malignant cysts or the development of malignancy during the follow-up period uh, or any cysts that increased in size over the follow-up period. Uh, whereas a benign course was defined as non-mucinous pathology on resection, cysts that remained stable uh, over the follow-up period or that resolved. Uh, so a total of 134 patients were ultimately included in this study. 51 patients uh, went for surgery. Uh, 63 patients had their cysts followed over a mean follow-up period of approximately 47 months. During that period, 54 cysts remained stable or regressed. Uh, while nine cysts progressed, uh, and progression included an uh, increase in cyst size in six patients and then development of pancreatic cancer, unfortunately, in uh, three patients. Uh, Forty cysts ultimately followed a non-benign course, whereas 68 cysts followed a benign course. Uh, multivariate regression analysis was performed, and those variables that were independently associated with a non-benign course uh, included uh, presence of a solid component, uh, symptoms, cyst size greater than 3 centimeters, and then also the presence of a high amplitude KRAS mutation. Uh, both solid component and symptoms were highly specific for a non-benign course but had relatively poor sensitivity. Uh, this same trend, uh, although to a lesser degree, held true for both cyst size greater than 3 centimeters as well as for the presence of a KRAS mutation in a cyst fluid. So what does this information add to the current knowledge? Well, in addition to the three high-risk cyst features, that is solid components, symptoms, and cyst size greater than three centimeters, uh, which were previously suggested by the original Sendai criteria, uh, in the current study, the presence of a cyst fluid KRAS mutation uh, was also independently associated with a non-benign course. In fact, uh, all malignant cysts in our study had one of these four variables present at the time of their index EUS. Uh, with that said, uh, while our data does support resection of all cysts which are symptomatic or have a solid component on imaging, uh, resection of all cysts greater than 3 centimeters in size and or those that manifest a KRAS mutation uh, would result in resection of many cysts that would have other, otherwise uh, had a benign course. Therefore, uh, in agreement with the recently revised international consensus guidelines, our study does support that in the absence of a solid component or symptoms in patients with an indeterminate or suspected branch duct IPMNs, size greater than 3 centimeters should not necessarily be used as a strict criteria for resection, uh, but rather as an indication for closer monitoring. Uh, in addition, uh, what this study adds is that close surveillance should also be recommended in cysts with a positive cyst fluid KRAS mutation given its independent association with a non-benign course. Uh, whereas asymptomatic cysts smaller than 3 centimeters without a solid component and negative for KRAS on cyst fluid analysis uh, can be monitored at longer intervals. Uh, thank you for your time.